in this module we'll see a workplace where staff is male and headed by a female boss we describe a masculine workplace and then see how gender is constructed in the discourse of its workplace gender is something abstract we cannot see it if we want to see its relation with language we can only see it when language is used so that's why we say that we would note the discourse used in the workplace the language use that is made in the workplace that would tell us whether this workplace is masculine or feminine it is a multicultural factory staff by males multicultural people uh, are coming from for example middle class lower middle class working class from different cultures from different communities speaking different languages following different values social moral values etc so they are working in a factory the workers do skilled and semi skilled work skilled work for which they need some professional training like engineers technicians and semi skilled where they don't need such kind of formal training for example uh, those people who do the work of packing so or loading uploading uh, etc but the manager is a woman manager of the factory the staff works on different floors of the factory uh, in it is multi floor or multi story building uh, different offices are located on different floors and there are few occasions for talking during work definitely it is not possible when people are working on different floors but they have talk at tea at coffee breaks and have social contact outside the work after working hours they have connections with each they have worked together for a long time in the factory so they have developed certain connections social relationship group identity with uh, each other and uh, definitely as we discussed in the previous module that when people work in the same community of practice so they gradually develop a particular common style of speech so uh, what are the features of communicative style these people adopt number 1 use of solidarity markers they show belongingness to the addressee such expressions are called markers of solidarity yagangat yakjeti as we say it in urdu so uh, these are such expression you know as you know uh, use they in instead of using singular you they use plural you uh, that is uh, not used in modern english but in informal talk plural you is used for togetherness okay in group talk gossiping swearing and uh, joking gossiping means not uh, as we take it in urdu it is not gapshap it is in fact in the meaning of backbiting uh, uh, that we call gossip in english and swearing like a uh, uh, curse shame on uh, you and goddamn and uh, such things joking are very common features of their style verbal humor uh, they share jokes nicknames very common among such people jocular abuse these are abusive expressions but they are not uh, full of aggression 
there is a touch of uh, joking with that. So these are common. But at the same time, the woman manager, Nasi, the difference, she alone is a female and she follows the communicative style of women. She uses imperatives. You know, all those sentences, we start with verb, we call them imperatives. We use them for making requests, for orders, etc. For example, you say, read this book, uh, open the door. So these are, don't sit in the sun, these are imperatives. So when they use imperatives, and imperatives are used for instructions, yeah, instructions to the staff. So they always use please with that. So this is one feature. She, uh, just to give you a mental picture of a meeting uh, of male staff with a female head. The direct communicative strategies are not purely related with feminine, uh, feminine or masculine. Now, first of all, what are direct communicative strategies? When we use imperatives without please or any other honorary fix like this. So we call that a direct speech act or direct communicative style. So they are not attached either with male or female. It means both sexes can use that. This is common with them. But this office manager prefers, you know, direct imperatives with police. Then description of feminine and masculine communication features show that if we compare features of both styles, so it shows that there is no one-to-one -one link between gender and discourse. The stereotyped features, the typical features, conventionally, normally, which are attached with men's style and women's style, often do not match with the complex nature of workplace interactions. At workplaces like offices and factories, there is a communication that is of complex nature. That means sometimes. It is between males and females. Sometimes there is one female and all other addresses are males. So sometimes there is one male and one female, both males, both females. So different uh, communication situations are involved here. So one-to-one -one link, to establish one-to-one -one link between gender and use of language, this is quite difficult. So we conclude from uh, this description of uh, a communicative style that is adopted by uh, male factory workers and that is adopted by their boss that is female, we conclude on the basis of this that a workplace can use a mix of speech style. There is nothing like this that this is men's style, this is female style. There is a mix of style that can be used at a workplace. So our original question that whether a workplace is purely feminine or purely masculine, this is answered here.